Hello, uh, Kev from Leeds Harmonica. I am attempting to film this because it's just going to be talking as I drive home from work because I have no time this week. Um, so I have been thinking a lot lately about Sonny Boy Williamson 2, variously known as Alec or Rice Miller. Without doubt, one of the finest harmonica players of all time. And I've been thinking about him because I am about to start putting together a series of videos for Patreon where I'm going to look at some of his licks and talk about what makes them special, what makes them particularly Sonny Boy Williamson 2-ish. Um, talk about some of the tricks that he uses to get some of the sounds that he makes. This guy, this cool guy, Sonny Boy Williamson 2, probably born around 1912, I think is the best guess. Um, he himself claimed that he was born in the 1800s, uh, but that may have been just so he could put himself as older than John Lee Williams and the other Sonny Boy. Anything that uh, Sonny Boy says is to be taken with a pinch of salt, I think. Um, I'm presenting these facts as I remember them, I haven't done a whole bunch of research on this. So anyway, apparently, I think he was the the youngest of 21 children. Born in maybe Tutwiler, Mississippi, maybe Greenwood, or maybe Glendale. I think those are the three places that he may or may not have been born. Anyway, he spent most of his time in uh, Helena, Arkansas, as far as I can tell. Incredible harmonica player. Well, if he didn't start recording until I think 1950, where he started recording for trumpet, um, which, funnily enough, was after the other Sonny Boy had finished recording. So, I don't know, maybe it's possible a promoter started using that name for him to try and cash in. Maybe he did it himself, who knows. He always said he was the original Sonny Boy. So, he started recording in 1950, but I think at that time he was already working on a radio station in Helena, Arkansas. The radio show called King Biscuit Time because they were uh, they were promoting flour, I think, King Biscuit Flour. He'd do these radio shows every day. I think they'd record, uh, they'd broadcast live from the studio. He went on to record for Chess Records and did most of his recording for Chess, I think. There are a lot of sides, I don't know exactly how many. The boon for him came when he and a bunch of other blues luminaries visited Europe in uh, the 60s as the folk revival was going on, folk and blues revival was going on. He went to Germany, Sweden and a bunch of other European countries and wonderfully from this time, a lot of good video of him playing, which is phenomenal to see. It will have been, as he was in UK and Europe, he uh, bought or had tailored for him his famous checkerboard suit, which it just looks so dapper on stage. And he got that attaché case that he was carrying his harmonicas in. Very, very cool. This man cut such an image on stage. He always looked cool always had it together. It wasn't long after that he returned, I think, to Helena, or Helena, I don't know how you say it, and was uh, back on the radio. And his death is quite sad, apparently he just didn't turn up for the show one day, and a couple of uh, the guys from the band went to where he was living and found him dead in bed, having apparently died overnight of a presumed heart attack. So that's a basic potted history, but he was full of tales about himself, and there were loads of tales about him. Levin Helm from the band called The Band tells a story, I think in the, the Last Waltz concert film directed by Scorsese. He tells a story about where they were jamming with 
Sonny Boy not long before he died and he, he'd be playing and drinking and playing and drinking but always spitting into this cup or spittoon or whatever all night long just spitting, spitting into this cup and it wasn't until afterwards they realised he was spitting up blood all night. And the other story he told, tells is of walking in on Sonny Boy <laughs> in his hotel bathroom and he's standing there in a string vest plucking a live chicken just because that's what he would do at home which is absolutely brilliant <laughs> I can just imagine it oh god oh it was while he was in London as well that he met up with uh, the Yardbirds and recorded with them and Derek Clapton I believe and it was from then that uh, his famous quote of those British boys want to play the blues so bad, and they do, comes from, which is just a, just a wonderful little quote, bless him. Sonny Boy played mainly, well, recorded exclusively, as far as I know, um, acoustically, that is playing in front of a mic on a mic stand, which sets him apart from his contemporaries like Walter, Big Walter, George Smith, all the, all the rest of those guys, Junior Wells, who would most frequently play with a handheld microphone and they'd be put into a guitar amp and they'd be blasting away on that. So Sonny Boy has a lot of the old school pre-war in his playing. He's spitty, you can hear the, hear the reeds twanging, it's it, the sound of the harmonica rather than the sound of the affected harmonica that Chicago blues players would typically play where they emulate trumpets and uh, brass sections. So it, a real old school earthy way of playing but really, really rhythmic and tight. He had tight little phrases, lots of space in his playing which lent into that sort of cool stage persona. Very, very tall guy, enormous hands. He would really command the stage. You can see in the video recordings of him that he has the audience in the palm of his hand. And, uh, but anyway, he was linked with uh, Robert Johnson. He, was, uh, he recorded with Elmore James. He lived apparently with Howling Wolf at the time that he started recording. Apparently you might have even been instrumental in getting B.B. King his first gig, which is pretty wild when you think about it. But back to his style, what else can we say about it? It's urban, but it's got a lot of that old school pre-war harp in it. Really rhythmic, really played the spaces. Groovy, groovy man. It's all in the timing, it's, it's command of time. If you can get hold of recordings of him playing unaccompanied, and there are some out there, but I don't know that they've ever been officially released. He's playing unaccompanied, and his sense of timing is just absolutely brilliant. I have heard that he used to be able to get on top of a box, just stand up on a box or a milk crate. Uh, just him and his harmonica and have people totally wrapped and dancing and in time, right? You'll struggle to find a player these days who isn't massively influenced by him, to at least some degree. And certainly you won't find any players who, any serious players who don't like him or don't rate him, you know. Very technical but it doesn't necessarily sound that way. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And he's more popular now than he probably ever has been. I mean, this, his recordings have been reissued so many times. Certainly one of the best known players and, and one of the best loved. So I'm gonna be looking at some of his licks in a series of Patreon videos. And I'm gonna start with a freebie on Life, Love and Blues Harmonica this coming Tuesday. So if you didn't know that much about Sunny Boy before, I hope that's been a decent little primer. If you haven't done a lot of listening, you really need to get, you really need to get involved. A lot more Sunny Boy 2 stuff coming up from leedsharmonica.uk. Hooray! Right, I'm nearly home. That's worked out quite well. I will hopefully see you Tuesday.